Greetings folks, it is hump day, the 10th of January, and the time flies, it does fly. Cheers. So I still have my rickety glasses, because um, the other glasses, I use them when I'm out and about. So I received another um, gift and music, and I'm going to review it this time. Um, Bob Burnside is, uh, well, I don't know who Bob Burnside is. Uh, Bob has been buying my music. Uh, he just bought another, I'll get this in the mail today, Bob. He just bought Murphy on CD, although he lets me know that he already has it on vinyl. Thank you, Bob. He sent a gift. This book by Richard McPhail, McPhail, my book of Genesis. Uh, he was, um, I've, I've only started to read it, but Richard McPhail was um, a, a, a friend and he was a major part of the story of Genesis from the very beginning. So I didn't know this book was out, so thank you for sending it, sending it to me, Bob. But he also sent me another of his CDs, and this time I'm going to review it. I was intrigued enough because the last one he sent me, it's like I said a little bit about it. It's like, well, it doesn't sound like it's really meant for me. Well, I'm more intrigued now. This is Bob's latest CD, Broken Window Pane. Um, I tried to look it up online and I see it's on CD Baby. I can find out about the producer, Paul Orofino, who's worked with a lot of people. I have some of his work in my collection, but I can't find out anything about Bob Burnside. I'm kind of curious, Bob, because I'm wondering, this is like your eighth CD release, but there's no information about you. Um, the record label, Pop Town, there's another Pop Town label, but apparently not this one. Excuse me, excuse me so much. Sorry, folks. So, Bob, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of in, intrigued as to your story, really, you know. Are you um, able to just make these, or do you have an audience that, you know I mean? Like, obviously, there must be an ob audience, but there's no information about you. These songs are acoustically played. Bob plays guitar well. He's a good acoustic guitar player. I would guess that Bob is my age or around there. He has kind of a gruff voice. Um, I tried to listen to the words, but it's like, I, it, so this is intriguing. I'm thinking that some of you folks who watch my channel, I'm not going to play this because it's on CD Baby, and I know if I play some music that YouTube is going to slap an ad on here. I don't like those ads, and I don't revenue share in them. Um, you can hear this on CD Baby. Uh, thank you, Bob, for sharing your music with me. I'm intrigued that you like what I do and what you do is so different from what I do. It intrigues me. Thank you. Um, so if that intrigues some of you folks watching this, uh, look up Bob Burnside and, and um, listen to his music. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Um, you know, a couple things on my mind here uh, besides music. Um, I don't have cable television, and I don't have Netflix, never did, so my main outlet for information is through the internet and real life. And uh, looking for information online, I'm looking at the development of artificial intelligence and what is already happening and where it's going. I just want to make the connection to popular media, how popular how media, movies, even music, popular music, commercials, a lot of it is psychological um, reframing and, and set mindsetting of, of the general population. The reason why I'm saying this is because it came to my attention that one of the artificial intelligent robots, Sophia, that is really um, being that is out doing all sorts of stuff has been made a citizen in Saudi Arabia. 
Now, I can imagine a lot of people that won't mean anything to them. But to me, and the way that I've been looking at this world, it's a huge red flag. Why does an, a robot need to be made, become a citizen? I see the implications of that already. And this whole idea that, oh, those are just movies, Derek. There's a lot of people much smarter than me who have said publicly, this is conditioning. Um, this is just conditioning, you know, preparing the, the dumb, the dumb uh, masses for what's about to be done to them. Does a robot need to be made a citizen of a country? Do you see the implications that the citizen will eventually <laughs> take over? Anyway, just thought. Ignore that if it upsets you. Here's something I haven't played for years. It came out in 1973. Paul Motion, a drummer, passed away a few years ago. Conception Vessel. This is a, such a gorgeous, beautiful, wonderful, amazing album. The back picture of him and the front perfectly describe what you hear. There's an aspect of most of the pieces on here where they're, it's like we're floating away in a wonderful way. Sam Brown is the guitarist on here who we don't never heard much more about. I'm sure that Sam Brown has made a, quite a career for himself, but interesting that he himself did not become a name. His playing on here is beautiful. Conception Vessel on ECM. I love that label. It came up because I had pulled just out of the blue to play this. Terje Ripdal, the Sandra, the Norwegian guitar player who's been around forever. He has this real plaintive, pleading, cry tone in his, in his guitar playing. It's real distinct. No one else sounds like it. This album is beautiful. It's like, I don't know that you can say that such a thing as a classic ECM sound. I think this is one of the early albums that that sort of statement is based upon. There's a glacial aspect to it in parts. There's a serene part. There's this open space aspect to it. Pal Mickelborg on trumpet. John Christensen on drums, who's played, you know, a ton of dates on um, ECM. It's wonderful music. I hadn't played this here, it's, this is how long it's been. I don't know when these sleeves, which we, the VC, the vinyl community, dubbed Blake sleeves. I forget how long these came about. But when the guy, Blake, um, also helped to loan me money to make my first records. But the, when they were made, I ordered a bunch to cover pretty much all my records. When I first got them, I was covering them with the end out so that you couldn't just open it and pull the album. You would have to pull the whole album out to play it. This goes back that far. It hasn't been played since it got Blake's sleeve. That's years, so it was wonderful last night and just a reminder of just how wonderful the ECM label is and this type of music. One of the only, I think I bought two, paid money for two records last year. One was the new Mew album, and one was for the reissue of this album because I'd really been wanting it. Patronoster, an Austrian ba a band from Austria, made one album. Their story is all in here. Originals of this go for thousands of dollars for a number of reasons explained in the book. I had always wanted a copy. I found it online and bootlegged um, a CD of it years ago so I could listen to the music. There's an aspect where you think when it first starts that this is going to be some kind of religious rock, and then, again, then it gets really weird. Like Pink Floyd, but weirder, with the organ and the spatial sort of uh, sounds they were doing. Patronoster. So when this was reissued and a copy came in to Omaha, I didn't buy it right away, you know, I because I really couldn't afford it, you know. But I wanted it, and so I finally did buy a copy. This is number, and it was hard on me, you know, it was, because again, my money flow is not real good. This is number 662, 
out of a thousand. But I played this all the way through last night because I hadn't played it since I bought it. And I am glad I bought it. This is a cool, strange sound. If this band had stayed together, it would have been very interesting what they would have come up with next. Another album I played that I just pulled, um, sometimes I'll do that. If I look at something, I'll think about it and I won't listen to it. But if I pull it and then I just pull it and then just play it, then it's, then I realize why I still have it. 801 Live with Bill Manzanera, Eno, Bill McCormick, Francis Mockman, Simon Phillips, and more others. I've always kept this because of the, the connection to Quiet Sun, Eno, all that stuff. Over the years, I've never really listened to it much because it was kind of, to me, just kind of so-so. Time has been kind to this. Now it makes sense to me what they were trying to do because they were trying to do something that really hadn't, it wasn't really established. This wasn't just rock. It wasn't glam. It wasn't progressive. But it had elements of all of that and something else. Uh, Simon Phillips drumming on here. He's a young man on here. You can hear that he's going to be a monster. He's an amazing drummer if you haven't heard him. So this is really enjoyable. 801 Live. Really glad I kept it. Here's one where I did the same thing. And when I first pulled it on, put it on, I didn't recognize it at all. And at first I was thinking, oh, this is going in the for sale pile. And, but I let it go. And it kept going. And I said, okay, I need to listen to the other side. This is a keeper. Peace Orchestra. Shining, repolished versions of some of their tracks, remixes. It's a double, double 12 inch single. And it gets to the point, at first it's like, it got to the point where it just went ahead and tried to be jazzy. Not tried to be, but you know what I mean? It went to the point where it's like the acid jazz thing kicked in. This is, um, gotta look at the, um, I have to use this to find the date. I have to look on the inside. But this is older, 90s maybe, 2000. And that's what it sounds like. But after listening enough, it's like, oh, oh I like this. Yeah, this is pretty good. And um, I can see myself playing this again. I don't see the date on here. But Peace Orchestra, Kruder and Dorfmeister. I think there's a real. Produced by Peter Kruder. Kruder and Dorfmeister. People that know electronic music know the, that name. So, this is one I pulled. Someone asked me about... Uh, do I have it right here? Yeah. Someone asked me about Clot 2, saying they'd never seen me show it before. Well, folks, I, I can't show you everything, and I've heard a lot of, about a lot of music that I never show, and there's a lot of music that I've never heard of, but... Plot 2, yes. And I went ahead and played this because I hadn't played it in a long time. Hope. Really wonderful, symphonic, progressive pop music. It's pop. Um, they've been compared to the Beatles, but they sound like Stackridge to me. Do you all know who Stackridge is? Um, Stackridge did go on to become a band called Corgus, who had a hit called Change Your Heart. Do you know that song? There's a complete connection between the sound of Clot 2 and uh, St Stackridge and the Beatles. I love this one. A little neutrino up of here uh, is, I think, a progressive rock um, undiscovered classic. It's just, I think, an amazing song. And then Sir Army Suit. They have two other albums. I don't have them. I don't have them. Someone asked me about John Dwyer of the OC's side project, the kind of synthy thing. Um, I went and listened to it. I, you know, I like what he does in the EOCs better. Um, the thing that they pointed my attention to reminded me of Digital Leather. And to me, at this point, it's like I can take that or leave it. You know, it's just like probably if I saw them play live, I'd enjoy it. Okay? All right, folks. Um, there's so much always to talk about. Thank you for being kind. Thank you so much. I'll add one more thing. Online, I see where some young actress, I forget her name, I don't know these actresses, but a beautiful young actress had recently been 
trolled by someone and her response was brilliant because she um, was very humane about it in her response to him and what came about was what I know to be true of most people who lash out at others um, angrily or in hurtful ways. They are hurting, targeting others with their pain. And it came to the service and this person just broke down and told their story to um, this actress, you know. So it was really wonderful and healing. I've been through that myself in the past, which is why I um, monitor my comments and I keep them clean because there is nothing happening here to attract negative, hateful, sick energy. Um, so when it's presented to me, it's real clear to me that there is a problem with this person. I have compassion on them, but I'm not the target, and so I'm not receiving the energy. I wish them the best. Part of that, part of this value set that I cling to, not even cling to, but this is my foundation, part of it was helped to be set through listening to uh, the music of bands like the Moody Blues. Their lyrics embody the kind of person I am and always try to be. Because I could always, like anybody else, break down and be a low down motherfucker and cause hell for everyone around me. I, I've done it in the past. I could do it really well. But I choose. I choose to stay on my path and try to be helpful be part of the solution. By living, we're part of the problem. So we consciously have to become part of the solution. So I'll close in saying that's another reason why the Moody Blues music is so important to me. So very important. 